Otto Heinrich Wiener, the 15th of June 1862 to the 18th of January 1927, was a German physicist. Topic: <laughs> Life and work. Otto Wiener was a son of Christian Wiener and Pauline Hausrath. Orphan of mother at the age of three, he married Lena Fenner at 32. He was a pupil of August Kunt at the University of Strasbourg, where he received his doctorate in 1887 with a thesis on the phase change of light upon reflection, and methods to determine the thickness of thin films. Wiener is known for the experimental proof of standing light waves. In 1890 he succeeded in determining the wavelength of light. He was professor at the University of Gießen from 1895. In 1899 he became professor at the Physics Institute of the University of Leipzig, where he succeeded Gustav Wiedemann. Together with Theodore des Caudres, he built an excellent physical institute there, and appointed Peter de Bie and Gregor Wenzel, in his academic inaugural lecture at Leipzig of 1900 on the extension of our senses, he presented the theory of physical education in the context of evolutionary theory. He took up Heinrich Hertz's theory that separates internal images—a conceptualization of reality—from descriptions of experiment principles of mechanics, 1894. It was the dawn of media technology. Wiener added to Hertz's work, and theorized cinematography as an extension of our senses 1900. Topic. The Standing Light Waves Experiment Otto Wiener's fame is mostly due to the experiment where he visualized light waves in steady conditions. Although it could be considered equivalent to Hertz's detection of radio waves, their intent differed. Hertz aimed at validating Maxwell's theory, while Wiener's purpose was to determine the plane of vibration of light waves, as they were conceived in mechanical theory. Note that both scientists, like most of their contemporaries, assumed the existence of ether. With the rise of quantum mechanics, the concept of luminous field changed dramatically. Nowadays, quantum optics replaced the problem of visualizing light waves with that of simultaneously measuring their phase and amplitude. Topic: <laughs> Experimental setup. The light was obtained from a carbon arc light, entering the darkroom through a slit. Then it was filtered through a prism, discarding most of the red side of the spectrum. An achromatic lens focused an 8 mm wide, slightly converging light beam. 220 mm after the lens, the light hit a polished silver mirror perpendicularly. Monochromatic light would result in a uniform wavelength, hence a regular standing waves pattern, parallel to the mirror's surface. Wiener's orthochromatic film was transparently thin, about 20 nanometers, measured by interference, which is much less than the wavelength the sodium doublet is at about 589 nanometers. It was laid on the mirror, over an equally thin slice of gel. That way, by applying pressure on one side of the film only, Wiener could slightly tilt it so as to make it traverse several standing waves. The standing waves were revealed by exposing the film for 20 to 35 minutes, after development and printing. <laughs> Drude's critique Wiener added benzene to the wedge after having been criticized for not considering the possibility of having photographed thin film interference fringes rather than standing waves. His interpretation validated Fresnel's interpretation rather than Newman's. Paul Drude criticized Wiener for this. With Nernst, he repeated Wiener's experiment using a fluorescent film as detector, in order to prove that the effect was due to electric fields. Topic. Relationship with interferential photography A photographic experiment for validating Fresnel's theory had already been suggested by Wilhelm Zenker 1829 after a call by the French Academy of Sciences in 1865. 
Zenka's proposal didn't delve into the thickness of the film, though. By exposing a thicker film, to be observed by reflection rather than by transparency, Gabriel Lippmann discovered interferential color photography, which he was awarded the Nobel Prize for. Wiener contributed to Lippmann's theory thereafter. Topic. Further repetitions of the experiment Repetition of the experiment under different conditions was carried out by Leisner, a Wiener's student, to better characterize the radiation. Leisner modified a Mach Zender interferometer so as to insert the film between the mirrors. Another repetition was the thesis of Ernst Schultz, commissioned by Nernst and Max von Lauer for comparing light intensity with the energy as measured with a micropyrometer, along the verification of the energy quantization hypothesis with respect to the simple wave theory. A further notable repetition, aimed at evaluating the dependence of a cesium film's photoelectric emission upon illumination conditions. Ives and Fry controlled bands formation using a thicker film to be dissected upon development. More recent repetitions avail of laser technology. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Die Erweiterung und Sira Sin, Academic Inaugural Lecture held on 19 May 1900. Leipzig 1900, Leipzig 1900. Der Zusammenhang zwischen den Angaben der Reflexionsbeobachtungen und Metallen und ihrer optischen Konstanten, Teubner 1908. Überfarbenfotografie und Verwandt naturwissenschaftliche Fragen, paper presented at the 80th Scientific Congress at Cologne on the Rhine in the general meeting of the two main groups on 24 September 1908, in, VERH, der GES. DT. Naturforscher und Ärzte. 80. Vers, zu Köln. TL. 1. Vogel, Leipzig 1909. Vogelflug, Luftfahrt und Zukunft, MIT einem Anhang über Krieg und Volkerfriede. Bath, Leipzig 1911. Die Theorie des Mischkorpus für das Feld der stationären Stromung. 1. Audlung, die Mittelwertsatze für Kraft, Polarisation und Energy. Transactions of the Mathematical Physical Class of the Royal Saxon Society of Sciences, Volume 32, No. 6, Leipzig 1912. Physik und Kulturentwicklung durch technische und wissenschaftliche Erweiterung der menschlichen Naturenlagen, Leipzig, Berlin 1919. Fliegerkraftlehrer, Herzl, Leipzig 1920. Works on aeronautical problems, introduction to aviation and aerodynamics for aspiring pilots. Das Grundgesetz der Nature und die Erhaltung der absoluten Geschwindigkeit im Atta, Transactions of the Saxon Academy of Sciences, Mathematics and Physical Class 4, Teubner, Leipzig 1921. Schwingungen elastischer Art im Kraftfreien Stromungsather, in, Phys. Zeitschrift, Vol. 25, 1924, pp. 552-559. Wheaton, Zeiten, Geschwindigketten. Ein Gespräch über Grundelgend Naturwissenschaftliche Fragen, Düsseldorf 1925. Nature und Mensch. Die Naturwissenschaften und die HRE Anwendungen, 4 Vols. Edited by C. W. Schmidt Edit, by H. H. Kritzinger, C. W. Schmidt, Otto Wiener, Hugo Kaufmann, K. Kielhack, G. Krejcik, F. Capella, C. Schaefer including de Greiter, Berlin 1926-1931. Zur Theorie des Stromungsathers. In, Phys. Zeitschrift, Vol. 26. 1928, S. 73-78.